first class we already discuss about what is magnet what are the properties of a magnet and how magnetic field produced due to a magnet and today we are going to discuss about a new chapter that is known as magnetic effects of electric current we already know what is electric current and what is a magnet so now let this do that means when there is a current flowing through a conductor due to that current carrying conductor a magnetic field is produced across the current carrying conductor that effect of electric current is known as magnetic effects of electric current we already discussed about another effect of electric current that is known as the thermal effect of electric current that means when current flowing through a current carrying conductor due to that current the conductor's temperature rises and it creates some heating effect and that effect of electric current is known as thermal effect of electric current and today we are going to discuss about another effect of electric current that is known as magnetic effects of electric current so this effect of electric current was first observed by scientist oester Oester first observed about the magnetic effects of electric current. According to Oester, he observed that when a current carrying conductor, let consider this is a current carrying conductor, along which he allowed to flow electric current. Let the current carrying conductor be A B, and it is connected with a potential difference D, due to which a current I is allowed to flow through it. Now, as the current allowed to flow through the current carrying conductor he observed that when he placed a magnetic needle or compass near this current carrying conductor this magnetic needle gets deflected okay when current i flows through this current carrying conductor ab and oester placed a magnetic compass close to this current carrying conductor the magnetic compass or needle gets deflected in such a direction and as we know that a magnetic compass or needle gets deflected only when it is present within a magnetic field and as there is no external magnetic field but still the magnetic needle gets deflected only when it comes close to this current carrying conductor and he also observed that if here is a key and this key is closed that means the socket is closed the current starts to flow through this conductor and the magnetic needle gets deflected and when he open this key that means the socket gets breaks there will be no current flowing through this conductor and the deflection in the magnetic needle gets stopped that means when current flows through this conductor only then the magnetic compass of needle gets deflected and when there is no current flowing through this conductor the magnetic needle or compass didn't get any deflection and also we observe that if this current value i is increased that means see increase the strain intensity of this current then the deflection in the magnetic needle is more clear when current flowing through this current carrying conductor the magnetic compass or needle gets deflected when there is no current the deflection in the compass is nil and again when the strength or intensity of the current through the conductor increases the deflection of the magnetic compass or needle is more again he also observed that when he change the direction of the current flowing through the current carrying conductor that means if the current through the current carrying conductor flows in opposite or reverse direction like this Here is the key, and it gets closed. And now the current flowing from this direction, positive to negative, and this is the current carrying conductor A B. So when current starts to move now in from B to A, initially it is moved from A to B. That's why the deflection of the compass will be like this, anticlockwise. Clear? When now current flows from B to A along this direction. when he placed the magnetic compass near this current carrying conductor now he observed that the deflection in the compass is in opposite direction clear so he concluded that the deflection of magnetic needle depends upon electric current 
as there is no when there is no electric current the deflection is zero deflection is more when intensity of current is more and the deflection reverses gets reverse when flow of current is reverse okay that means when there is no current flowing through the current carrying conductor there will be no deflection in the magnetic needle or compass or if when there is only current flowing through the current carrying conductor the magnetic compass or needle gets deflected and also as we increase the intensity of current through the current carrying conductor the deflection of the compass will be more and if we reverse the direction of flow of current in the current carrying conductor then the deflection of the compass is also get reversed clear it was observed by the wester now as the compass is only gets deflected only when it is placed within a magnetic field that means as this magnetic compass get deflected close to a current carrying conductor that means near to this current carrying conductor there must be a magnetic field present and that magnetic field is due to what the flow of electric current through this current carrying conductor because when there is no current flowing through this current carrying conductor the magnetic needle placed near to this current near to this conductor did it get deflected that means only when current flows through this conductor it gets deflected that means the electric current must have an magnetic effect due to which it creates a magnetic field surrounding this conductor that's why it's known as magnetic effects of electric current and it was first observed by the scientist oester clear so now we already know that when a current is flowing through a conductor it produces a magnetic field surrounding it and due to this magnetic field when a magnetic compass placed near to the current carrying conductor it gets deflected but when the current direction gets reversed the deflection of the con compass gets reversed so when and how the deflection of the compass we can know or we can calculate so to calculate the direction of deflection of the compass ampere give a rule that is known as ampere's swing rule to know the deflection of the magnetic compass due to a current carrying conductor so so what is ampere's swing rule let us know so ampere's swing rule so according to this rule if a swimmer starts to swim along the direction of current flowing through the current carrying conductor in such a way that the current is entering through the feet of the swimmer and comes out from his head then the direction of the left hand of the swimmer will determine the direction of deflection of north pole of the compass clear that means if here is a current carrying conductor in which current is flowing along this direction that is from a to b and a swimmer starts to swim along this direction along this direction so that the current enters at its feet and comes out of his head like this then the left hand side this is the left hand of the swimmer and this is the right hand of the swimmer then the left hand side of the swimmer will determine the deflection of north pole of the compass that means if the swimmer swims like this this will be the left hand of the swimmer that means the north pole of the compass will deflect along this direction like this clear similarly if we change the direction of the current like this 
So now, you need the compass and the current is flowing along this direction. So now the swimmer starts to swim along this direction. Okay, now the swimmer starts to swim along this direction. So now this is the left hand of the swimmer and this is the right hand of the swimmer. So as the swimmer starts to swim along this direction, so that the electric current enters at his feet and comes out of his head like this. Then the left hand side of the swimmer will show the deflection of north pole. That means the north pole is now deflected along this direction. This is the left hand side, so it will be now deflected along this direction. Clear? So this is known as Ampere's swimming rule. That means when a swimmer starts swimming along the direction of current such that the current enter at his feet and comes out from his head then the direction of his left hand shows the direction of deflection of north pole of compass. Clear? So when the swimmer starts swimming along the direction of current such that the current enters at his feet and comes out from his head then the direction of his left hand shows the direction of deflection of the north pole of the compass like as we already discussed in this figure this is known as ampere swing rule which is used to determine the deflection of the north pole or deflection of the magnetic compass due to a current carrying conductor clear and there is also another rule which is known as snow rule what is snow rule So snow rule means so this snow rule each letter of this word snow represents the rule that means snow rule means the snow s n o w that is s n o w each letter of this word represents the rule what snow rule tells us that if the electric current is passing through the current carrying conductor in such a way that if we place a magnetic compass parallel to that current carrying conductor and the current direction is from south to north pole of the magnetic compass or along the direction of south to north pole of the magnetic compass then the north pole of the magnetic compass gets deflected towards the west that means if it is here it is a current carrying conductor like this if this is a current carrying conductor and the current is allowed to flow through it from this direction, from A to B, like this. And if we place a magnetic compass parallel to this, such that the current enters through this compass from south to north direction, like this, then the north pole of the magnetic compass get deflected towards west. That means if this is north, this is south. We already know the symbol if this is north, this is south. Then this direction will be east and this will be west. So now, in this case, this will be north, this is south. So from this, we know this direction will be east and this direction will be west. So when current enters through the magnetic compass in such a way, 
or the direction of the current in the current carrying conductor will be in such a way that when we place the magnetic compass parallel to this, the current will enter through the south pole and come south through the north pole of the magnetic compass. Then the north pole of the magnetic compass will get deflected towards west. That means in this case, as current is flowing from A to B, when we place the magnetic compass parallel to this current carrying conductor and the current is flowing from south to north direction, then the north pole of this compass will deflect it towards west. That means here is the west, so this will deflect it like this. Clear? This is known as snow rule. Similarly, if we change the direction of current flowing through the current carrying conductor like this. Now change the polarity. So now the current will start flowing through this along this direction. This is G. Okay, so as from this figure, the current is flowing from this direction I. Clear? So as current is flowing from this direction, now we have to place a magnetic compass parallel to this current carrying conductor in such a way that the current enters through the compass from south to north. Like this as current is flowing along this direction, so we have to place a magnetic compass parallel to this current carrying conductor in such a way that the current enters through the current carrying conductor along the direction such that the south pole, at the south pole the current enters and at the north pole the current comes out. Then only the deflection of the north pole will be towards the direction of west. That means as in this case, this is north, this is south. Here this is north, this is south. So this will be east, this will be west. So as this is north, this is south. So this will be east, this will be west. So now this north pole will deflect like this. Here, yeah. and correct. This is south, north, this will be east, this will be west. Clear. Yeah. So this will now deflect like this. Clear? Yeah. Okay, this is known as what? Snow rule for determining the deflection of the magnetic compass which when placed near a current carrying conductor. And as the magnetic compass gets deflected due to the current carrying conductor, it is confirmed that the current carrying conductor must have a magnetic field surrounding it. And that effect of electric current is known as magnetic effects of electric current because due to this current which is flowing through this conductor is able to produce a magnetic field surrounding it due to which the when a magnetic compass comes close to it gets deflected that effect of electric current is known as magnetic effects of electric current so how uh, so now this was how the scientist Oester experimentally demonstrated that the current carrying conductor produced a magnetic effect and due to that effect there will be a magnetic field surrounding the current carrying conductor and how if the current changes if the intensity of current changes if the direction of current changes then how the deflection of the magnetic compass changes with respect to all the factors we will discuss clearly so now let us discuss if there is a magnetic field produced across this current carrying conductor then this magnetic field must have some strength as we already discussed in magnetism that when there is a magnet placed at some place then surrounding this magnet there is a field within which it can influence any other magnet and that intensity of this field is known or strength of this field is known as the strength of the magnetic field so here in this case as a current carrying conductor is able to produce a magnetic effect surrounding it that means this current carrying conductor has some magnetic field surrounding it so if a current carrying conductor have some magnetic field surrounding it, then what will be the strength of the magnetic field at different places surrounding the current carrying conductor. So for this we have to calculate the strength of the magnetic field produced due to a current carrying conductor and this was first experimentally done by another scientist known as Bayer Schwarz. And there will be another law that is Bayer Savart's law. So let us now discuss about the Bayer Savart's law. So as 
we already discussed that when the current carrying conductor is placed a magnetic field is produced surrounding the current carrying conductor that means in a current carrying conductor if this is a current carrying conductor current is passing through it i and due to this current a magnetic field is produced surrounding this in the some region that is the region within which the magnetic field is produced that means current means what flow of charge that means charge in motion we already know that when in electrostatic charge electrostatic means charge at rest it produce only electric field so when charge at rest it produce only electric effect only electric field and only get affected by electric field Okay, you have to remember when charge is at rest, it produces only electric field. It produces only electric field and only get affected by electric field. That means if a charge is at rest, it produces within its surrounding an electric field and only an electric field can affect a charge at rest. Clear? Similarly, when charge is in motion. uniform motion that means the charge starts to move when charge is in motion it produce both electric and magnetic field and it get affected by both electric and magnetic field okay that means when charge is in motion when charge starts to move when charge is in motion it produce both electric and magnetic field and it also when a charge is in motion it gets affected by both electric and magnetic field that means if a charge in motion it have the capability to produce both electric field and magnetic field and if a charge is in motion it can be affected by both electric and magnetic field but in case of charge at rest if a charge is at rest it have the capability to produce only electric field surrounding it at a charge at rest can only be affected by an electric field clear but in case of a current carrying conductor you have to remember these points in case of a current carrying conductor as we already discussed that in case of a current carrying conductor that means current is allowed to pass through a conductor then the conductor is able to produce a magnetic field that means a current carrying conductor is producing what within its surrounding a magnetic field clear a current carrying conductor produces magnetic field okay whether it produces an electric field this is a question most arise in our mind as a current carrying conductor you already discussed and poster demonstrated the experiment that a current carrying conductor produces magnetic field surrounding it as the magnetic compass placed near to the current carrying conductor gets deflected so is the current carrying conductor produced an electric field surrounding it 
if there is a current carrying conductor then there must be a magnetic field surrounding but is it possible that the current carrying conductor also produce a electric field surrounding it as we already know that the current carrying conductor means the electrons or charges are moving through this conductor that means the charge has been moved so whether this current carrying conductor produce an electric field here we already discussed that when a charge is in motion it produce both electric and magnetic field and it can be affected by both electric and magnetic field so here in this case of a current carrying conductor the charge is in motion clear so it produce a magnetic field so the question is that is it producing an electric field the answer is no because the current carrying conductor is neutral by nature it is not a charged conductor the current flowing through this means the electrons or charges are moving through this but this current carrying conductor is neutral by its nature the net charge of this current carrying conductor is zero so as this current carrying conductor is not a charged substance so it is not able to produce any electric field or surrounding it so electric field is not produced by a current carrying conductor you have to remember that a current carrying conductor only produces magnetic field it never produce any electric field surrounding it okay as net charge of a current carrying conductor is zero clear so a current carrying conductor only produce magnetic field and also it only gets affected by a magnetic field okay a conductor only produces magnetic field and it only gets affected by a magnetic field it never a current carrying conductor never produces electric field surrounding it because the net charge of the current carrying conductor is zero and it is never a charged substance that's why it can able to produce a electric field Clear? So you have to remember these points regarding a charge at rest, regarding a charge in motion, and a current carrying conductor. So now let us discuss about as the current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field surrounding it. What will be the strength at any point near the current carrying conductor due to the current flowing through this? The magnetic field produces. So the what will be the strength of the magnetic field near a current carrying conductor? So for that we have a law. Which is known as Biot-Savart's law. So now let us discuss about Biot-Savart's law. So what is Biot-Savart's law? so according to biot savart's law if here is a current carrying conductor in which current i is flowing and here is a point p and we have to determine the magnetic field strength due to this current carrying conductor at the point of observation p so if this is a current carrying conductor at x y current is flowing through this from x to y direction let us assume a small portion of this current carrying conductor of very small length dl okay and the position of this dl from this observation point the distance is r clear so let us assume a small portion of this current carrying conductor of length dl and this small portion of this current carrying conductor dl is at a distance r from this point of observation p and as i current is flowing through this conductor through all point the same current will pass that means at this small portion of length dl the current i is also flowing and this small portion 
of length dl is known as current carrying element. Okay, this small portion dl so we consider as that is known as what current carrying element and it is a vector quantity. Okay, so current carrying element is value will be I dl vector. I is the amount of current and dl is the length of this element. Why well we have to consider a small length dl? As we already know in previous cases for a continuously distributed object to calculate field or strength anything at any point we have to consider a small element so in case of this is completely charged substance we have to calculate a small charge dq and in this case we can consider a small current di because the i is the flow of current the charge flowing through this conductor so for this flow of current through this complete conductor we have to assume a small length DL. We cannot consider a small point because to flow of current we require at least two points which are separated by a very small distance because to flow from one point to another we have some separation otherwise it can be flow. So as the current flows for that reason we have to consider a very small length which is tends to zero. So here this DL length is very negligible or tends to zero. For Understanding purpose, I make this much large, but this DL length is very small, and this DL length with the amount of current flowing through it is known as a current carrying element, which is defined by I DL. So, according to Biot-Savart's law, the magnetic field strength at this point, due to this small current carrying element, will be the magnetic field strength dB is equal to the current carrying element I DL sine theta by r square clear this current carrying element db at point p is equal to igl sin theta by r square where i dl is the current carrying element r is the separation between the current carrying element and the point of observation p and sin theta is the angle of is the sign of angle between the direction of current carrying element and point of observation position vector. As the current carrying element is a vector quantity and this direction is always tangent or along the direction of current. Here the current carrying element direction will be like this. This is the direction of current carrying element and this is the direction of position vector of the point of objection P. So this angle is known as theta and sign of this value of angle is here placed as so db equal to i dl sin theta by r square or from this equation we can write that the magnetic field strength is directly proportional to the value of current carrying element i dl it is also directly proportional to the sine value of the angle between the direction of current carrying element and position vector and it is inversely proportional to the square of separation between the current carrying element and the point of observation. So by combining this, let it be here is a constant also, constant of proportionality k. So by combining this we get this equation or this implies we can write db equal to some constant k into i dl sin theta by r square. Clear? So this is known as what? The Biot-Savart's law. Okay, so this is the expression for what? Biot-Savart's law where this k is known as the constant of proportionality and its value will be mu naught by 4 pi in SI and this will be 1 in CGS. So this expression can be written as db equal to mu naught by 4 pi i dl sin theta by r square. Clear? So this is the expression for given by biochars to calculate the magnetic field strength at any point of observation P which is at a distance R from the current carrying element or the current carrying conductor and here mu naught is the permeability of the medium within which this current carrying conductor is present and the term IDL this IDL is known as what current carrying 
element and this angle is between this angle theta is in between the direction of current carrying element and the position vector of the point of observation with respect to the current carrying element so the current carrying element here is a vector quantity and how to calculate the direction of current carrying element the direction of current carrying element will be the direction of current carrying element is always tangent to the conductor current carrying conductor For example, if this is a current carrying conductor and current I is flowing through this, and I am assuming a current carrying element at this portion. This is the length DL, and I is flowing through this. This this is the current carrying element. I am assuming you can assume the current carrying element according to your choice. If I am assuming the current carrying element at this place, so what will be its direction? Its direction will be tangent to the current carrying. conductor so as the current carrying conductor is a curved shape here so the tangent will be like this so this is the direction of current carrying element at this point if i am considering the current carrying element at this portion this is the length dl and current i is flowing through the complete conductor so at this place the current carrying element direction will be like this so the current carrying element direction will be tangent to the current carrying conductor if simply the current carrying conductor is straight oh yeah then current i is flowing through it and i am considering a small portion dl here so this is the current carrying element and as this is straight away the direction of the tangent will be along this direction same as that of the flow of current clear so the direction of current carrying element is always tangent to the current carrying conductor and it's a vector quantity because i is a scalar quantity but the dl length or displacement of the current is a vector as the displacement this is a displacement vector so i dl is might be known as current carrying element here this dl is a displacement vector so the complete current carrying element is a vector quantity so as the magnetic field strength is also a vector quantity this is the expression for magnetic field strength at a point p due to a current carrying conductor in terms of scalar form so how we can represent this in vector form so for vector form we can write this as vector form in vector form we can write here this is the direction of current carrying element i dl this is the direction of position vector r vector so we can write the db vector at the point p will be mu not by 4 pi i into dl vector cross R vector divided by R vector mod Q. Clear? This is the expression for what? The magnetic field strength at a given point surrounding the current carrying conductor. Clear? Where I is the current flowing through the current carrying conductor. DL vector is the length of the current carrying element or the displacement vector. R is the position vector of the observation point with respect to the current carrying element. Clear and mu not is the permeability of the medium within which the current carrying conductor is present. So here we can calculate the so this is the expression for magnetic field strength at the point P in terms of vector quantity and this magnitude can be written as d B mod will be how much mu not by four pi. This cross product will be I d L R sin theta. By R vector mod Q. So this is the expression for the magnetic field strength in scalar form. And what will be its direction? As this is a cross product, D L cross R. So the direction is always obtained by using right hand thumb rule. Okay, by right hand thumb rule, we can. determine 
the direction of d vector okay so dl cross r so for this particular case dl is along this direction r is along this direction so we want to calculate what the direction of db so by right hand thumb rule if we are crawling our finger from dl cross r along this direction so the magnetic field at this point will be inward like this this is known as right hand thumb rule okay or also we can use right hand palm rule what is right hand palm rule if we stretch the fingers of our right hand along the direction of the position vector of the point of observation and the thumb along the direction of the current carrying element then the direction of the palm will determine or shows the direction of magnetic field strength at the point of observation so by applying the right hand palm rule for this case this is the position vector of the point of observation i am stretching the finger along this direction and the thumb will be along the direction of current carrying element so like this this is the direction of current carrying element this is the direction of this finger will be along the direction of position vector then the direction of palm will show what the magnetic field strength at this point so as this palm is inward so here the magnetic field strength will be into the plane or similarly by applying right hand thumb rule if i am crawling the finger from dl cross r like this the thumb will be inward so at this point the magnetic field also inward okay so this is the you know right hand thumb rule so now you can determine it also by using right hand palm rule. so what is right hand palm rule so right hand by right hand palm rule a we placed our finger of the right hand along the direction of position vector of the point of observation and thumb of the right hand along the direction of current carrying element then the direction of palm shows the direction of b vector clear by right hand palm rule if we place our fingers of the right hand along the direction of position vector of the point of observation and thumb of the right hand along the direction of current carrying element then the direction of palm shows the direction of magnetic field vector clear so this is how we can calculate the magnetic field strength due to a current carrying conductor at any point close to it by using biot-savart's law and how to determine the direction of magnetic field strength at that place by using right hand thumb rule or right hand palm rule clear so this is all about biot-savart's law and we and this is the expression you have to remember to calculate the magnetic field strength at any point near up to a current carrying conductor clear so as we discussed that the magnetic field strength due to a current carrying conductor can be given as mu not by 4 pi i into dl vector cross r vector divided by r vector mod q this is the expression for power savart's law where i is the current so this is the current carrying conductor carrying current i and here is a point of observation p and we are assuming a small current carrying element here of length 
dl whose direction is always tangent to this place and this is the position vector r vector then the magnetic field strength at this point will be this much and its direction can be calculated by using right hand palm rule or right hand thumb rule so this is the expression for the magnetic field at this point this expression can also be written in any in further formats like this here the current i here this is i that means the current i flowing through this current carrying conductor so the i can be written as as we know i can be written as how much dq by dt the rate of charge flowing through this conductor per time so in place of i we can write dq by dt so this expression can be written as db vector equal to mu not by 4 by in place of i we can write dq by dt into dl vector cross r vector divided by r vector mod q clear so now rearranging this dq remaining outside taking dt within the bracket we can write this can be written as mu not by 4 by dq into dl vector by dt vector cross r whole divided by r vector mod q clear so now here this dl by dt is what dl means the displacement by this current this is the displacement vector dl this is the displacement vector and dt is the time interval for which the charge d q is allowed to flow through this that means this displacement vector dl by dt will give us what the velocity of this charge that flows through this current carrying conductor so and we already know that the, in a current carrying conductor the velocity of the charge will be what the drift velocity if this is a current carrying conductor and current is flowing through it then the all the charges are flowing through a certain velocity that is known as drift velocity so from this expression we can write this can be written as mu not by 4 pi into dq into this is velocity v cross r divided by r vector mod q clear this is also an expression for the bayer savart's law or for the magnetic field strength at a given point when in terms of current we have the rate of flow of charge and the speed of the charge if in a current carrying conductor charges are flowing with certain speed then how to calculate the magnetic field strength at that point we can use this formula clear or else from this expression we can also write if this is a current carrying conductor i dl cross r so from this expression we can also write it as as j vector the current density can be written as i by a the current density j vector can be written as i by a so from this we can write i equal to j into a so this expression can be written as db vector equal to mu not by 4 pi in place of i you can write j a or this can be j vector dot a vector j vector dot a vector into dl vector cross r vector divided by r vector mod q clear so from this expression by rearranging this we can write mu not by 4 pi into a into dl this is area into length will gives us what volume this is the area vector this is the length dl vector it displacement vector will gives us what volume so we can write this as volume into taking j with it j cross r divided by r vector mod q this is also an expression for the magnetic field strength where j is what the current density 
that means the current flowing through the current carrying conductor for unit cross sectional area of this current carrying conductor and this is the volume of the current carrying conductor so this is also the expression for calculating magnetic field strength at the point of observation due to a current carrying conductor so there are three formats or three ways that we can use to calculate the magnetic field strength at a point due to a current carrying conductor okay this is the most important that we can use in general way if there is certain excuses or there is certain other formats then also we can use this also clear so these are the expression for how to calculate magnetic field strength due to a current carrying conductor at a point close to it due to the magnetic field produced by the current flowing through the conductor okay and this is all about the biosarvas law and this is the expression for calculation of magnetic field strength due to a current carrying conductor in next class we will do some applications regarding this biosarvas law okay thank you